Coming soon to viewers like you, Spider-Man 3 Review, to be reviewed by Techno Geek Reviews. Previously in Techno Geek Reviews. Hello guys, I'm Techno... You know, so I'm talking about today is... I'm Blu-ray from a Blu-ray outfit. It's I'm breaking down a lot of Spidey films recently. Do I have to review this one? Nah, I, I can't, guys. Okay, guys, they said I have to review it, so let's get down to business. No, I got it. I can't. I just, I can't. This is disappointing as a Spidey fan. Okay. There's no running from it. Time to break down. The worst of the worst of the worst of the Spidey. Well, not, it's not the worst Spider-Man property, but it's one of them. Enjoyable in some ways. The worst is Ultimate Spider-Man, and there's no way I'm going for that mess. Today, I will be breaking down Ultimate Spider-Man. What? What is wrong with that spacing? One more. I'm wrong, Spidey bad thing again. Today I will be breaking down Spider Man 3. Enjoy. Stay tuned. Keep on watching. And it's just gonna blink to me, or I'm not here physically, but in voice and images. Get ready. Spider-Man, a character responsibly shoved force down her throat so much and he's come through in this convoluted mess of a movie that makes the other two films with their flaws look like Mozart. Think I'm talking about the amazing Spider-Man 2? Nope. It's Spider-Man 3. Let's break down and start comparing these film this film. But first, we must start the love interest. Mary Jane in this film is at the height of her being most unlikable. Yet, Peter Parker is also cheating on her with Gwen Stacy and is bad in some. But her suspecting to be viewed like Spider-Man, as big as Spider-Man, and the drama she causes makes her very unlikable in this film, though she is a lot more justified than in the prior films that she berates Peter Parker in Spider-Man 2 and Spider-Man 3. Gwen Stacy in the 2007 Spider-Man 3 film, she's not as interesting as, yes, the Amazing Spider-Man franchise one. In this film, she's much less a character and more of a plot device. A plot device to make Eddie hate Peter, try and rush an origin storyline, and to cause drama between Peter and MJ. She is the glue of this film, so her dad is in this film and is not as interesting as Amazing Spider-Man. She's just a plot device and there's really no need. What took three films to set up 
led to the bloodshed and the death of Harry Osborne, which was pure disappointment in this film. To put it simply, the journey was more interesting than the destination when it comes to the Harry Osborne within this franchise of Spidey films. He's met in the film and also haunted by Norman. He's just not as interesting as he should be and is a rather disappointing character within many in this film. Oscar in the 2007 Spider-Man 3 film has no focus at all in this film and has least focus within this franchise of Spider-Man films. The only focus it has is that Oscar is still the remaining company that designs Harry Osborn's Green Goblin suit and Norman. JJ is fun but puts Peter and Eddie in a love triangle face over a position at their work. Now we talk about black suit Peter Parker, the suit section of Fender Regime. Peter gets cocky swaggerness with the black suit. The suit is much more... Well, it doesn't really do anything interesting besides make him dance around in the film. The black suit is more... Same suit as the other two films, but in black. Like they see DC song back in black. That's the suit color. Comes more simplicity and less interestingness brought out. Eddie Brock, I should feel more bad for him, but I can't feel bad for a guy who since he's a main man after one date in the film. I can't take him serious in the film and he's getting goo, it's black goo from Peter Parker and becomes Venom as he is in the comics. I can't believe he's a bodyguard. Peter gets tired of the black suit and puts it on him and well, doesn't forcefully put it on but indirectly puts it on him. And he's just not that good of a character within this film. Also, there's Sandman, and they try to make him like Bull, but he's not. The plot of this film is not simple. Oh, you know, the action in Spider-Man 2 and the origin story, and, well, this film addresses a scene that's in Spider-Man 1, where he gave a certain look like he was gonna murder a guy within this film. And to put it simply, as much as I love this franchise, it's a kidnap plot trilogy. Mary Jane is, and Pain as uh, Peter is most unlike one in this film. It's the worst of the trilogy, but of both trilogies, and I have to rate this whole plot, Sandman, whole convolution of the mess that I analyzed as 3 out of 10.